Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and today, finally, we're gonna learn how to make actual, realistic, afro-textured hair in Cinema 4D. Man, after three weeks of intense research and development, I'm proud to say I've unlocked a few amazing features in C4D Hair Tool. So, if you wanna support me and this channel, I made a pack with these hairstyles available on my Gumroad, link in the description. It literally comes in the form of a wig that you can easily apply on almost any head that you have on your model. Uh, with some minor adjustments sometimes and bam you have a head full of stylized hair uh, you can also just use the hair materials or the hair objects and apply them yourself on your model's head uh, it all depends on your preference um, each hair piece comes in uh, two versions one high detail and one low detail in case your computer can't you know pull through the high detailed one and i'm gonna have a few styles and you know, if I see that you like them, I'm going to make more and more and more. And this really, really supports me. I mean, um, one of the reasons why it took me so long to create this tutorial is because, uh, you know, I have to work also in between all this research. So I wish I didn't have to work. You know, I wish I could just do this. So, yeah, you know, the more you support, the more I can do this. Uh, so thank you for everything and go to my Gumroad and buy everything. All right, now let me quickly just go over a few simple hair terms before I start. Curl types are assigned letters and numbers to imply like the amount of curl a hair has. It goes from one to four, one being completely straight and four being extremely curled. Uh, each category has like three subcategories, A to C, to imply the curl strength within that curl type. So Afro textured hair only comes in levels three and four, which is what we're gonna focus on. Uh, levels 4B and 4C are actually easier to make because the curls are so tight together that they kind of form like a tight zigzag pattern, like a kink pattern, which is easier to make. But as you can see in the preview, there's definitely ways to address like the more defined, long coiled curls. And I'll show you that in detail in the next tutorial. As someone with kind of curly hair, I found it so weird that literally nobody is talking about how to achieve highly realistic curly hair straight out of cinema. But I kind of get why nobody's talking about this. Curly hair is so much detail and variation uh, that has to be controlled, which requires the hair to have 10 times more segments and details than straight hair, which means slower feedback in the viewport, which means experimentation takes way more time. And the fact that Cinema 4D's hair tool is so unintuitive makes the experimentation even much, much slower. So I have the feeling that most people are just giving up in the process. And that's not even taking into consideration the very unique way curly hair moves and hangs so yeah there will be no dynamics in these tutorials the hair is gonna sit still uh, I don't think this tool is ready for curl hair dynamics but who knows what the future holds I'm learning things every day okay so in this tutorial we'll focus on the do's and don'ts of afro textured hair and I'll show you some examples of how to apply it on a real head and in the next ones we'll go into more like detailed styling and stuff like that Follow me on Instagram at Ojang, go to my Gumroad, comment, subscribe, share, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Let's go. So I have a half a sphere about the size of a human head, and I know that by adding a figure object, and that's about the average size of a human being, so that's good. I'm going to drag the hair tools, hair mode, and hair selection menus from the simulate menus, because I'll be using them a lot. Then I'm going to make sure that the sphere is selected and add hair. And we got some ugly ass straws. So I can see I have 145 guides. Hair is 100 centimeter long. And in the hairs tab, I can see that I have 5,000 strands of hairs across the whole surface. As far as hair numbers, the average human head has about 100,000 hairs. However, 100,000 hairs at like 200 segments will probably crash your computer. So you'll have to fake it out a little. Curly and kinky hair has way more volume, so you can get away with slightly less hair. Uh, if you crank up the hair amount, lower the hair segments or increase the hair width and lower the hair amount. You got to choose your battles wisely. So for this example, I'll go with 5,000 hairs, but for a real head of hair, I go between 80,000 to 100,000. I'm going to reduce the length to 20 centimeters. In the growth part of the hair and the guide tabs, I can add uh, black and white maps to dictate where the hair and guides can grow more specifically, but we won't worry about it now. Also, if I ever want to reset the hair growth, I can go to editing in the guides tab and hit regrow. Okay, so the most important aspect of curly hair is the hair segments. 12 is far from enough. For curls to be smooth and rounded and not like jaggedy in a synthetic jaggedy way, you would need much more. It depends also on how long the hair is. For medium hair length, 100 segments is the minimum. We're going to turn off dynamics because we're not going to touch that. Uh, in the editor tab, you can set your display to hairlines so you can see the hair without having to render it. 
Sometimes it's useful for quicker back and forth, but we're going to use the render for preview, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to the guides tab and route the guides in the polygon area mode, which will give the growth more of a random spread across the surface. I'm also going to reduce the guides count to 80. Okay, so let's quickly go over the octane hair material. Uh, I'll apply hair material on the hair object and I'll choose melanin mode for slightly more realistic results. Now I can adjust the hair colors by adding more or less melanin. The more melanin, the darker the hair is. The less melanin, the more blonde it is all the way to white. Pheomelanin basically adds red pigments to the hair, so the more pheomelanin, I think that's how you say it, the more ginger the hair will be. For afro textured hair, we'll go with 100% melanin. And I'll quickly just add another light to get more light and shadow action going on. Now, one more cool thing I can do is to change the hair color along the hair length. For that, Octane has a node called W coordinates, which gets access to the hair length with a black and white gradient. So the roots are black and the tips are white. Now I can use that as float information into the melanin tab, which will tell the melanin to be zero at the roots and one at the tip. And if I add a gradient node in between, I can control them uh, to my desire. So I can reverse direction. I can bring the nodes closer together for a more harsh transition, which is more natural uh, when you bleach the hair there is like a harsh transition between the new hair growth and the bleached hair i can also change the material node to albedo and then use the gradient node to actually give color to the hair so i'll change the darker node to my desired color and the white node to black since now the gradient is actually producing color information and not float information and if i plug it into the albedo tab you can see that i get the same look but with dye in the hair instead of bleach oh uh, we can do some more cool stuff like adding noise to, uh, color to the hair we'll take care of that in later tutorials i'll show you how to do that. Great, so now I'll go to Cinema 4D's hair material, which now I only use to control the hair shape. So I'll turn off color and specular. For thickness, average human hair thickness is between 0.0017 to 0.018 centimeters. For this example, I'll go a bit high and use uh, 0.02 centimeters. Usually it's too thick to look real, but it'll do it for the example. I'll add a slight variation and add a little bit of tapering at the edge. I don't like to taper it all the way down because um, that's not how real hair works. There's always uh, thickness at the tips. And actually, let's go with 0.2 centimeters um, just so we can see what's going on without adding too much hair. Now, these are the most important qualities for afro textured hair. Frizz, kink, clump, tighten, and wave. I wouldn't really bother with any other qualities, but I'll kind of quickly show you some of them. Frizz deforms the hair with a random noise and can completely change the hair direction as you can see. I'll go over the way each component affects the selected quality and this applies to all the other qualities as well. So the first component is the overall strength. I can crank it over 100% to get a lot of frizz. I can scale the X to control the strength of the frizz noise on the X axis and the Y on the Y axis. Usually you want to use um, slightly different numbers for these. You can add variation to the overall strength which will give different strength number to each hair so 100% variation would make some hair not frizz at all and some be at the full set strength and some all the way in between zero and the full set strength the amount controls how many hairs are affected by the quality so if i set it to at a 50 percent half of the hair strands will not be affected at all the curve controls how much of the set strength is applied across the hair length so the left side affects how much strength is applied to the root of the hair and the right side on the tip of the hair the bottom is zero effect and the top is whatever strength you set at the top component if i raise the left side the frizz will start to affect at the roots as well which is good you usually want to affect the roots as well a little bit so in the texture area, you can add grayscale maps that will control the strength applied uh, on the hair across the surface. So white areas will have the hairs affected at full strength and black areas will have the hairs not affected at all. Okay, so the next very important quality is kink. This also applies deformation with a random noise. However, kink doesn't change the hair direction, unlike frizz. As you can see, the hair keeps the original form. Um, this is probably the most used quality for afro textured hair. I rarely go under a thousand percent strength with kink. The more segments you have, the less strength you gotta go. And I make sure the root of the hair is affected as well. Now you can see two things start to happen when distorting the hair. One is that the more the hair is distorted and curled, the shorter it gets. So always take that into consideration. The second thing is that it becomes way lighter in color and that's because because the specular roughness becomes very strong. It's a weird issue with octane hair material and the only ways I've found to address it is to just to be more subtle with the amounts of light uh, you use to light up the scene. It's tricky but it's doable. I also use crypto mats to mask out the hair and make it darker in post and you can check out my render passes tutorial if you want to know how to do that. And also there's another way that I'm going to show you later. Titan is another important quality. If the hair is completely straight, Titan will simply curl the hair into itself. However, when you add frizz or kink, Titan pretty much accentuates those qualities and basically tightens the hair into itself. Uh, it's a way to amplify kinks and curls. And as you can see, the tighter the kinks and curls get, 
the more hair segments you need, otherwise you get these jaggedy edges. If I crank up the segments, you can see the kinks looks way more natural, but the more segments you have, the slower the hair system will be. So let's keep it at 200 segments and cut the hair amount by half for now. Now this place is a way to draw your own kink basically. Uh, the curves dictates the distortions of the hair in each direction. Usually you don't need it, unless you absolutely know you do for your own reasons. Maybe when we start stylizing the hair, but for more natural hair, this place is irrelevant. Okay, so curl. This is probably the most notorious quality. You would think you need curls for curly hair, right? Wrong. What curl does is curl up the hair into itself in one big curl. And no matter which direction or axis you choose, it's not going to get what we're used to as curls. And it gets worse when you start bending the hair. Um, with curls, the hair won't bend where you want it to. Yeah, just don't use curls to get curls. Uh, I'll show you one example where you can use it later on, but generally stay away from it. So what about twists, you ask? That might sound like what we think of curls in hair, maybe. Not really. If we select normal axis, you can see that something starts to happen. You actually start to get these twisted curls. The problem is that once you start brushing and bending the hair, the hair doesn't follow the guides. It just uses them to change the diameter of the twist. This is pretty useless for realistic hair. Probably good for other stuff, uh, but not for hair. So stay away from twist. Now wave is where the magic happens. And this took me weeks to figure out. And when I did, I jumped out of my chair. So right off the bat, the wave quality distorts the hair in a sine wave or an S wave. It's pretty cool, but kind of underwhelming. And let's just look at one uh, hair strand to see the effect more clearly. If I crank up all the hair strength, you can see that something is starting to happen. I can play with the frequency, which basically tells how many waves occur within the hair length. And let's make the curves at one all the way through. So the whole hair strand is affected. And you can see that there is a very obvious S wave to the hair. However, once I set the phase of one of the axes to 90, you get a motherfucking curl. That's it. And if we set X and Y scale to be uh, the same, it's a perfect coiled curl. This, this is how you get actual curls in Cinema 4D hair. And now I can reduce the frequency to make the coil less dense while keeping the hair length, but increasing the coil diameter. Or you can play with the overall strength, which will make the coils less dense while keeping the coil diameter and increasing the hair length. And the most important thing is that now the hair follows the guides. I can bend and style the hair any way I want to and the coils will beautifully follow the styling. And of course I can play with the variations to get some variations. And once you combine this with the clump settings, you get like curly blocks. Um, to me, this is incredible, but let's move on. Let me reset the guides and move on to the clump. So I'm going to quickly go over the clump settings. Each clump has a single hair in the center, pulling the surrounding hairs to it. The count component tells me how many hair strands can become the, that central hair strand uh, to form clumps. We have 2000 hairs, so 10% of that will be 200. So theoretically 200 clumps can form now. But the tricky thing about clump settings is that every component depends on other components to behave. So honestly, I wouldn't worry about the count settings and use other components to control the clumps. The clump component tells the hair in each clump how strongly they get pulled into the center. The radius sets the maximum radius on the surface in which clumps are allowed to form. Uh, if we reduce the radius, you can see some hairs are starting not to get affected because they're outside of that radius and uh, have no clumps to be part of. Limit tells the maximum amount of hair strands allowed in each clump. So I set it at 200. With 2000 hairs overall, we'll probably get about 10 clumps. Now we can play with the radius to make sure more hairs are included in each clump. Uh, the bigger the radius, the more hairs are clumped. The smaller, the less. And playing with the count won't really change a lot. However, if I increase the limit number and increase the radius, you'll see how the clumps are affected. Setting the limit to 800 and increasing the radius will give us around three clumps. So Take your overall hair numbers divided by the amount of clumps that you want and put that number into the limit and then increase the radius until you're satisfied with the clumps. The higher the radius, the cleaner the clumps are. So let me quickly show you how the two curves work in the clump section. We have the top curve that controls the clump amount along the hair strength and the bottom curve, the fall off, that controls the clump amount across the diameter of the clump surface. Let me start uh, with showing you the fall off curve. So the left side of the curve controls how much clump will happen in the center of each clump and the right side, how much clump happens on the outside of the clump perimeter. Right now, the end is set at zero. If I start pulling the 
zero value to the left, you'll see that I'm reducing the area in a clump in which hair is being clumped. Now let me put it at 100% and play with the top curve. This one tells how much clump will happen along the hair length. If I pull the right side from one to zero, the tips are getting less and less clumped. And if I pull the left side at zero effect slowly to the right, you can see how the roots are less and less affected all the way to the tip. And the same thing for the twist curves. So back to our example. I'll play with the curves and strength to get clumps that are less tight. I'll add some kink and now I can shape the hair the way I want it and the clumps will follow. Now let's look at the twist real quick. The twist here can be really annoying. Once I introduce some twist, let's say 1080 degrees, you can see what it does. The problem is that once you start adjusting the clump to your leggings, the twist become a little unpredictable. The biggest problem is that hairs from one clump are trying to twist into another clump, uh, which can introduce these huge unnatural curves. Usually increasing the radius adds a little more control, but if I want different types of clumps, it gets messed up again. And no matter how I play with the settings and curves and fall offs, or even with the hair interpolation between guides and reduce the amount of guides, it's just too unpredictable. The biggest problem is that once I start bending and styling the hair, the twists won't follow the guides and become even more messy. So yeah, unless you're absolutely sure, avoid the clump twist. So this was a general overview of all the main qualities required for Afro textured hair. Now let's put all this into actual practice. I'm gonna kinda go for these two different styles, a uh, very natural tapered fro and this classic kind of 70s afro style. I have a model here. I'll put a link in the description if you want it. It's a Daz model called Valentino. If you want to know how I made the skin texture, you can check out my tutorial about realistic black skin. So the first thing we'll, we need to do is isolate the scalp where the hair will grow. All we need is to make a polygon selection on the model head and make sure your selection is slightly larger than the area you intend to grow the hair on. So I'll just add this little extra part here, but you can see the selection I made and you can see the selection goes all the way to the ears and in the back, uh, it's just slightly wider than what the hair is going to cover. Also make sure it's totally symmetrical. Once you're happy with your selection, hit UP to make an object out of the selected polygons. And now you can see there's a new object with only the selected polygons. Now we can get rid of any materials or selection tags on it uh, and rename it to let's say dome. Now we'll go to layout at the top right and select 3D paint. Then we're going to click on the icon with the brush and three dots at the top. Click deselect all. Click on the X next to the dome object. Then we're going to click next. Click next again. You can uncheck these options. 1024px is okay for us. Make sure the color is set to white and hit finish. Now we have a fresh canvas where we can draw the hairline. But before that, we need to UV and wrap it the right way. So we'll go to the layout at the top right again and go to UV edit. As you can see, the, the UV is split to different islands, which is not good for us. So first thing we'll do is click the edge mode at the top. Use UM for edge selection tool and make an edge selection on the back of the head from the bottom to around the top of the skull. Then we'll hit shrink in the projection tab which will recreate the UV map from a shrink projection. You can also use sphere, but I much prefer shrink. Then go to relax UV tab, make sure cut selected edges is checked and hit apply on ABF mode. And this is the right map that we want. Now we'll go back to the 3D paint layout. Make sure the brush is selected in the left menu. Make sure the color is set to black and start painting in the hairline. And it's not painting anything and it took me a few seconds to realize it's because the brush pressure is set to one. So make sure the pressure is set to 100%. And now you can paint in. And you should look at real life references to see the hairline you're going for. Uh, my Wacom failed on me here, so I'm painting with the mouse. I'm usually much better than this. And you should use the mesh lines to get accurate and symmetrical results. Try to be as clean as possible, but don't go too crazy because we'll use Photoshop to fix it up. So just paint in the, the very edges for now. Once you're done, make sure everything is to your liking. Go to UV mode again. Go to the layer menu and hit create UV mesh layer. This will add the UV mesh as a visible layer to the painted file. Uh, now hit save and hit yes. Now go to the folder where your Cinema 4D file is. And right there you'll find a TIFF file called uh, something like matte underscore color underscore zero dot TIFF, something like that. Open it in Photoshop and this is the painted hairline. And now you can paint in the rest of the map and just fix the little bumps and bruises uh, to your likings. Photoshop's brush is way smoother and easier to like micro control. And later on we'll use this file to create more stylized growth like fades and, and parts and um, all these things. So when you're done, Make sure you invert the image so the growth part will be white. Save it. In this image, it's preferable to save as 16-bit to get more information in the grayscale. Go back to Cinema 4D, go to your regular layout, and go to the material on the dome and hit reload. Or if you named it with a different name, uh, which you should, import the new file in. And now you can see exactly where the hair will grow on the scalp. 
Uh, this looks good to me, so we can move on. You can hide the sculpt and just right click on the material texture and copy the image from there. Now with the sculpt selected, add the hair in. Go to the growth part in the guides tabs and right click on density and paste in the image. Change the levels to 2 because there is no gray in this image, just black and white. And in order to see the effect on the guides, uh, select polygon area in root. Now go to the growth part in the hairs tab and do the same thing. Let's change the guides length to 10 centimeters. Let's also uncheck the dynamics and turn on hair display line in the editor tab and bring it up to 50%. Great. Now let's quickly drag our tools in. Now I'll use the cut tool with visible only unchecked and just slightly cut the edges of the hair at the sides as well as at the back in this kind of gradual way. We're not going too deep into styling in this tutorial so I won't put too much effort into it. Now I can use the brush tool, uh, set it move mode with collision turned on. Actually, that reminds me that I need to right click on the model, go to hair tags and click hair collider. And now the hairs won't really go through the models and collide with it. So now I'll select the hair again and with the brush tool, drag it up. And we can do that, but a more precise way to start would be the comb tool. The comb tool won't allow me to drag the hair. Uh, I can control all the hair with the curves on the right side. I'll select local Y direction, make the roots unaffected and the tips fully affected. Set to strength at 100% and hit apply. Now you can see only the roots are being pulled down on the Y axis. So I'll undo that and set to strength to minus 100% for the opposite direction. Hit enter and now I can change the settings here and see it affecting the hair live. I'll set the point to be soft and start changing the curve until I get the look that I want. This is just a general big move to get the overall growth where I want it to be. Now we can move to the hair shape. I'll change the thickness to 0.02 with slight variation, which like we said is on the very thick side. I'll add kink with pretty high strength on both axes. Uh, make sure the roots are affected too. Do the same thing with frizz, but reduce the overall strength to be very low. And that reminds me that I need to crank up the hair segments, so I'll set them at around 100. Now, let's see how it's looking. And goddamn, whose mans is this? Let's fix the poor bastard. We'll add a, uh, we'll add a hair material, and this time we'll use albedo. Set the color to black and the specular to mid gray. Sometimes it helps fix that specular roughness issue and uh, make the hair closer to black. Uh, we can turn off the color and specular on the hair shape and material. Let's bring the kink strength way up. And turn on tighten with roots affected. And we're getting somewhere. Now, once we add way more hair, like 50,000 strands, now we're talking. Now, I want to make the edges a bit cleaner, which is not really going to be that easy, but we'll try. So if I turn on length and bring the, bring it down to 80, it doesn't really change it. I can also try and bring the frizz and kink amount all the way down just on the tip. Uh, but it's not doing much. Best option would be to bring down the variations on everything. Uh, now let's bring some clump in. Right off the bat, we're looking pretty good. I'll reduce the radius a little bit. And this time you can see changing the count affects the look. I'm not going to mess with it too much because it looks good and I don't want to go too deep into styling anyway. Turning on twist introduces the problems we were talking about earlier, so we'll put it back at zero. Now let's give him a little fade. Uh, let's open the hairline map we drew in Photoshop and draw a shape that follows the contour on the side of the head and kind of curves at the back of the head into the center. Uh, now double click that shape and go to layer styles and turn inner shadows. We'll actually turn color overlay as black and change the inner shadow to white and play with the distance and size and angle uh, which will dictate the amount of fade. White will be full hair length, black will be zero hair length. Then I'll copy the layer, mirror it, move it to the left side uh, and flip the inner shadow. I'll save this as a different file, very important. And cool, now we're back in Cinema 4D. Let's go to length, set it to 100 and add the fade map we just created. I'll bring down the variation to zero and now we get a more gradual growth on the sides. Now I can go to Photoshop and adjust the fade strength and shape more accurately. Go back to Cinema, hit reload image and I can always increase the black point, for example, to increase the amount of black, but I prefer doing it in Photoshop. So I'll scale up the shapes in Photoshop to create a bigger gradient. And I really like this look. When you zoom in, you can really notice how thick the hair is. So let's reduce the thickness to about 0.012. And now I can take the brush tool, set it move mode, and very lightly drag the hair on the side upwards. I'm in guides mode, by the way, so the selection affects the whole guides as a spline. And let's see how the render looks. That looks cool. All right. Okay, cool. 
Let's look at the afro now. I have a female model here with the dome or scalp part as a separate model and painted the hairline in just like we did in the previous model. I'll add hair to the dome, set the guide root to polygon center, add the hairline map to the density, set it to two levels, copy that into the hair growth tab, and let's set the hair length to 50 centimeters, select the clump tool, set towards center at minus 100% and hit apply. Then hit new transform a bunch of times, which will keep applying the same action over and over. This basically spreads apart the hair uh, so the guides on the center stay in the center, but the guides on the edges of the hairline are pushed down gradually. As you can see in the example, the afro really hugs the sides of the face. So that's where I want to get. Now let's use the hair life selection tool and select only the guides at the top of the head and use control command to deselect a few guides on the forehead. So our selection kind of looks like this. Now I'm going to invert the selection and use the comb tool on camera Y at 100% strength and actually I'll use 50% strength and make sure the roots and the tips are affected about the same amount in the curve. I'll hit apply then click grow selection at about 100 neighbors at distance of 2 and hit apply and do the comb action again hitting new transform a couple of times then again grow the selection and do the comb again hitting new transform a few more times. That looks good. The hair on the edges is really pointing downwards while the hair at the center is not. So it gives me a way more spread out direction of the guides. Now I want to cut the hair in a very precise way in the shape of a ball, which I'll never be able to do by hand. So I'll add a sphere and I'll scale and position it at the center of the head and make sure that the overall scale and shape looks like a nice afro shape. I'll make the sphere editable and use soft selection to bring in the centered polygons and use the sculpt tool to kind of shape the face area in this curved in way. Once I'm happy with it, I can select the cut tool and drag the sphere into the cut at section and hit apply cut object, which will cut the hair in the shape of the sphere. And it didn't work, so I'll reselect the hair and hit cut again, and now it works. However, I had only a few guides selected, so it only applied it to them. So I'm gonna undo, deselect the guides, and apply cut object again. And now we have a nicely shaped afro. Now let's edit the hair shape. I'll give a 0.015 thickness with a slight taper and slight variation. And let's increase the hair amount to 30K. And of course, increase the segments to 100. I'll apply kink at high values and I'll apply a curve that reduces the amount of kink at the tips. And actually, let's just use one hair for now so we can see more clearly how the hair is affected. So you can see that the tip of the hair is not being kinked. Now, I'll actually add a curl. This is because I want the very tip to curl into itself. What I'm hoping to achieve is a very clean edge of the fro without too many tips kind of protruding outside which will give the fro a very clean and crisp edge. So I'll adjust the curl curve to only affect the very tip. And you can see now that the tip is round. So let's bring back the hair and bring down the width back to 0 0.015. Now let's crank up the overall kink value and reduce the variation on everything. Uh, we'll add some tighten. And let's make the hair more dense with 80,000 hairs. And I'm just trying to tighten up the edges as much as I can with the curves. Let's try and reduce the scale. The difference between length and scale is that length cuts the hair and scale just scales down its overall shape, which hopefully will tighten it too. Okay, let's use a comb tool now on all the guides, applying it on the tips only at minus 50% and use the scale tool with relative unchecked to just scale it in a little bit. Now let's go to Photoshop and use our hairline map and blur it a whole lot. Then using the levels, I'll just strengthen the whites and bring in the blacks a little bit. I'll just paint in a little more white at the center and save it as a new image. Go back to Cinema 4D and add that image to the scale texture. And now we're telling the hair to scale down at the edges and stay the same scale at the center of the dome. Maybe it's a little too much. Let's bring up scale to 100. All right, cut to, I'm just trying to look at the single hair here and I can see that the curl is not aligned at the tip. So I'll bring down the curl amount so the tip of the hair is round and let's make the tips even less kinky and increase the tighten at the roots. And I wanna go back to the blurred edges map and paint the edges more white. So the hair is not getting scaled down that much at the edges and then reload that image in Cinema 4D and we're looking much better. I'll increase the hair amounts to 100,000 which makes the edges cleaner because it's more dense. And let's introduce some very light clumping. 
clumping at 50% with 30% variation, radius of 5 with 0.5 variation, and make the clumps only start towards the end of the hair, and also add a noise texture for some extra variation, and I'll make the edges of the clumps less clumpy, and actually make the tips more kinky and adjust the curl. Then I'll apply the hair limit at the clump to 1000, which still looks too strong, so I'll reduce the clump amount to 10% with 10% variation. That is looking crisp. And if you want to tighten the edges even more, you could use the clump tool set towards center with keep length checked and start dragging so the tips start to curl in. Then use the scale tool set along normals with relative checked and scale it up to its original size approximately. Then clump it into itself a little more. And actually let's increase the guide segments and then scale it back up a little. And it's a bit larger than we had it before so we can scale it down using the hair shape material. 80% is too small, so let's try 90%. And that looks like it helped tighten the edges a little bit, especially at the bottom and the sides. Not a huge difference, but it's something. So I'm gonna stop here and use the next tutorials to dive deeper into actual hair styling. Uh, the cool thing is that there's so many different unique styles with this hair type for both men and women. Uh, that one tutorial is just not enough for that. So stay tuned for the next tutorial where I'll show you more unique fades and parting, curly locks, high top fades, tight buns, um, baby hair, yeah, much more. And you can definitely go to my Gumroad and buy these ready-made hair packs. Uh, they're easy to use, can be applied on almost any head in different ways. Man, I'm really happy we're discovering all these techniques. It's absolutely insane to me that no one is talking about this, including Maxon. So yeah, if you have any questions, hit me up, follow me on Instagram at ojang, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I love you. Have a good day. Peace.